Former President George W. Bush is speaking out about the Biden administration's decision to pull all U.S. troops from Afghanistan. Here's what the former president said in an interview with German media. I'm afraid Afghan women and girls are going to suffer unspeakable harm. Is it a mistake, the withdrawal? Of I, you know, I think it is, yeah. I think because I think the consequences are going to be unbelievably bad. And uh, I'm sad. Joining us now, former C Chief of Staff at the CIA and Department of Defense, NBC News National Security Analyst, Jeremy Bass. Jeremy, it's great hey, to Willie. see you. What do you make of the president's comments? Obviously, Afghanistan is a problem you've looked at, studied, worked on for many, many years. Do you agree with him? Well, I think he has standing, obviously, to be concerned. He shouldered the burden of sending troops into Afghanistan after 9-11. So I understand that he's concerned about the fate of our troops as they depart and also the fate of the country they're leaving behind. But there's a reality here, Willie, which is that we've been at this for 20 years. And I don't know how much more we're going to be able to train up the Afghan National Security Forces to protect their own country. When you look at the terrorist threat more broadly, the threat emanates not just from the Afghanistan-Pakistan area, but also from Syria, from Yemen, from West Africa. And we have to have a globally deployed, over-the-horizon kinetic strike force that can hit terrorist targets any war on the globe. And having 2,500 troops in Afghanistan is not going to achieve the objective necessarily of protecting the homeland. So I think President Biden made exactly the right call. Yeah, and we're looking at a poll right here from Politico Morning Consult. 60% of the country, 76% of Democrats agree with the withdrawal of American troops from Afghanistan. You touched on it briefly, but what about the argument that is made for Korea, or the argument that's made in Germany, leaving a small American force there? Quick strike, if something comes up, they can go and take care of it. There is a case for that. What do you say? Well, again, our forces have to be globally deployed. So we have forces in Asia to focus on some of our security interests there, whether it's checking China's aggression or whether it's dealing with the threat from North Korea. And we have obviously forces in Europe to deal with the Russian threat and to protect NATO. But 2,500 troops in Afghanistan wasn't going to prevent Afghanistan from being a safe haven for terrorists. We already accomplished that mission. We got Osama bin Laden. We decapitated al-Qaeda. And now it's time to redeploy those forces around the region, whether it's in the Middle East, in the Gulf, whether it's in other places, so that they can be positioned to hit terrorist targets and protect our country. That was the initial objective. And I think Biden has really, I think he leveled with the American people. He said it's going to get ugly in Afghanistan. We're not going to necessarily be able to protect that country from the Taliban. But that doesn't mean our troops should be there forever. It's already getting ugly, as you know. We heard uh, some of this from President Bush yesterday in that interview I've heard, I said earlier in the show, from friends of mine who served over there. There's almost a sense of sadness, not sadness that their friends have to stay. They're glad that they're coming home to be with their families. But did we get the job done? Was it worth it? Is Afghanistan going to become what it was on September 10th, 2001? But what do you make of those concerns? Well, it's heartbreaking, honestly, to see that Afghanistan has not been able to become a stable country, a, a country like the United States that protects people from all walks of life, that protects women and girls, as the former president referenced. Uh, again, but I think we have to be really clear eyed and and. And, and sort of push back on some of those emotions and say, what's in our interest? Where should our troops be? But no doubt, we, as we do this and as we look forward to the 20th anniversary of 9-11, we have to honor the sacrifice of those who served. And anybody who's walked through Section 60 at Arlington National Cemetery, our hallowed ground, knows that sacrifice very well. Jeremy, I want to ask you about this story. The Russian-speaking ransomware gang, Our Evil, behind the most recent attacks affecting thousands of companies, suddenly has disappeared from the Internet. The group's blog and payment processing infrastructure both are gone right now. Unclear why the group is offline or if it's really gone at all. Ransomware gangs have been known to disband and then return under different names. Our evil has hacked more than 360 American targets in 2021 alone, part of an extortion spree that locks up victims' computers, leading to demands of payment in exchange for a decryptor program and a promise not to leak sensitive files. Does anybody you know actually think these people have gone away? No, they probably haven't. But I think this may be good news in that either the Russian government has cracked down on them or maybe the U.S. undertook covert or clandestine action to decapitate or debilitate their ability to project their uh, ransomware attacks. Or maybe they thought the heat was too hot. But for right now, they've gone away. But I think we have to be ever vigilant because they will come back. All right, this transition.